they have decided to work out in my garden. It's such a nice day. We have had the most interesting weather. We had thunder and lightning all Friday night. The whole sky was lit up. So loud and so much rain, and then it rained Saturday. So everything's wet, all the garden's wet, and all the wood chips are wet, everything's wet, so I don't have to water. Now I can just come out and work. Sunday wasn't bad, and today is beautiful. And so I'm gonna work out in the garden, and I'm just gonna, I'm making eggplant today, so I wanna get some eggplant. Oh, down there. And so I'm picking some stuff to make for dinner later on. So I've got more eggplant, and there's a whole bunch more on here. So I'm just gonna work in the garden. Wait a minute. Oh my gosh! It's the middle of October. It's time to do a garden tour. I completely forgot. Come with me and let me go grab my camera and let's go do a garden tour. But you're gonna have to bear with me because I gotta take care of a squash in the front yard that I keep forgetting about that needs to be done now. So let's go run and do the garden tour. Come on, come with me. This male zucchini and flower and I need to pollinate this flower. I lost some of my Korean melons because there hasn't been that many bees around and when I started pollinating them I started getting them. You know what I'm just gonna leave it there too since that's the only one. See that's a female and that was a male so I just kind of tore off the petals and want to get some pollen in there and since I don't need it for anything else I'm going to leave it in there so if any ants or bugs fly in there they'll crawl on that and do their job since I already did it because I've lost a couple squash here too because there hasn't been as many bees okay now let's start the garden tour I want to do that before I forgot this is the front yard and it's starting to look a little bit like a garden it's going to take time because I'm still working on the tub see what I'm doing with all these tubs that I've set up is I'm just going to slowly build them up all through fall and winter. No hurry because what I'll do is these tubs will all have probably some sort of squash growing in them. Who knows? I might throw something else in them. You never know. But right now I've got some zucchini starting which is really interesting since it shouldn't really be growing since it's been so cold. But it is. So we'll see. This is a dinosaur kale cutting. Then I put in there and there's some parsley growing in there and look, a tomato plant. We'll see. A lot of the tomatoes actually do well here in the winter because we can stay warm. And sometimes the tubs stay a little bit warm. Not hot, but a little bit warm. And if they do, that will help the tomato plants. But right now I've got some celery going and there's mint of course. That's all chocolate mint there. And back there is garlic chives. There's more squash over here. That's a male flower. So I don't need that one. I already used one male flower. I didn't see any females on there, so I'm not doing anything there today. You don't have to do it, but I just have noticed there's not as many bees, so I figured I'm going to help out. See if I can get some more squash before the end of the season, since sometimes I grow really big squash plants all through the fall into the winter, but the rabbits had decided to deadhead them. In other words, they went in and chewed the top where the vine grows out and that pretty much does in the plant. There is the fire pit that my daughter had got me a while back. Let's see what's in there. Look at that. I haven't really done anything in there I hope because I don't remember. But here I started planting some little sets of walking onions to see if they'll come up. That's a collard. I'm just trying something. Lettuce came up and my bok choy which I did not plant. I had a bok choy and it died back and it was in there and there were some seeds and obviously some of the seeds came good so look at that oh there's a new one back there it wasn't there look at that so I've got two lettuce in there which is good I see how there is stuck in a walking onion in there as well so now the rabbits can't get that and see another tub that I will just be filling and remember you don't throw away dead leaves or branches if they're too big break them up. See, I don't break them up that much. They're going to break up on their own. 
these have holes not quite on the bottom. A lot of people ask me, how do you put your holes? This time I put them, oh, about a quarter of an inch, a half inch up. The front yard is not soil. This is a blacktop. So I figured if it gets dry, I want to make sure everything's got enough water here because we're drier than a lot of other places. So I don't generally put the holes on the bottom unless I want earthworms to travel up and down. And I'll tell you, they can travel up even if the holes are not on the very bottom. So it just depends on where I'm planting. But like I said, this is all blacktop. This was like a parking, little parking space. So Gary covered it in wood chips. It's turning in the soil. It's very dry here, but see how the wood chips have broken down? Look at that. And if it was kept damp, I'd have a really rich soil, but that's not kept damp. So it's gonna be really nice underneath the tubs. And then here in the center, Maybe later, I was thinking of taking the succulents out, but I might leave it. They've been here for years. I'm just going to put a zucchini or something in the center, and maybe another pot next to it. All right, I think that's enough with the front yard. Look at the popolo that came up with the cactus that came up from seed. You've seen that in probably all my videos. All right, so let's keep walking. I have not done anything on the table. Somebody's going to come and say, what's that? I'm planning on putting something in there. There will be holes. I haven't drilled holes in that pot yet. And I think I'm going to start some carrots in the front. But whatever, it's going to be covered because I don't want the squirrels or the rabbits to get it in the front yard here. In the bricks along here, I've got walking onions and sorrel growing. And I've got garlic chives, which is like my second favorite. Everybody knows. Look at the seeds. Everybody knows I love my walking onions. Everybody needs to grow walking onions. Look at this. I threw in some teeny clusters and sets, and they're gonna come up here. My problem is I've got a rabbit that has decided it tastes good. Because he hasn't touched this one. I just love walking onions. So it kinda depends on if he's traveling through. He'll take some bites out of my mind. Oh my goodness, this one's, these are still walking. Look at that. And there's one there. Very small, but they're walking. Probably put some more wood chips around the bottom and that would make it even walk more. Here's my basil and my tomato. We'll see how this goes. Again, you know, we're in fall now, so some will make it and some won't, but it's still full of tomatoes. We're getting tomatoes all the time, everywhere. My peppermint, you've seen that, and this fig tree, which I think I have an idea of where I'm gonna put it. Had I put this in the ground, I broke this off a fig tree that I like. And if it was in the ground, this thing would have been six feet tall, like my other ones. But it's stunted right now because it's in a teeny little pot sitting in one of my compost tubs. But it can't really do much, so it's growing very slow. And I want it to grow slow because I'm trying to figure out where to put it. Oh, look, my stevia. There's one stevia plant in here. And it's flowering, which means it's probably going to die back soon. If you're growing stevia and you have it in a pot and it just turns brown and dies back, don't throw it out because usually the roots come back and it comes back bigger each year. That's what mine have been doing, coming back better, bigger. See all the stevia flowering? I have not tried to grow it by seed because sometimes the seed will taste different than the original plant. And since I like the original plant so much, I don't bother. So I just let the plants come back. Oh, that's a little turmeric that's trying to come out. And there is... A ginger. I don't know. Gary said those weren't any good. I had saw some at the store for fun. I bought some. And see, they're just not growing as good as they should. A lot of them are irradiated. And if they are, they'll start. But they won't continue to grow. They're really set back. So I don't know if they'll make it or not. But the rest, you know, this is my turmeric here. My ginger growing back there. This is my ginger table. Let me move back. And it's, they're doing really good. So I'll just do my own cuttings of ginger. I just kind of, I don't know. I see something, I see a little sprout in the store and I buy it and I've got to stop that. <laughs> Again, more stevia that has been getting ready to flower and set seeds. So we'll see. I don't know if I'll you know, plant any of that. I probably won't. I've got more stevia than I need. And I wouldn't want to sell the seeds because I wouldn't know if they would taste good or not. So you can do cuttings on them. But what I did was I went to Home Depot and they had stevia and I tasted it. I took my chances. I lived. 
and they tasted really good. They were, the taste was so good that I thought, this is the plants I want. And there was a cluster, so they had planted like a whole bunch in one pot. And so when I came home, I separated them and I ended up with a dozen or more stevia. Okay, let's go in the main yard. And boy, is it green and alive with birds. It's so nice to come here and sit. I'm really blessed to be able to come here and sit in this garden in the morning, have my coffee, listen to the neighbors up on the hill build a new house. <laughs> all the noise. But to have my coffee and be able to just see all this. It's, wait, I think I see something under the collar. Let me see if I can get in there. I see. That rabbit, that rabbit lives in this yard and he's a big, fat, healthy rabbit. He's lucky that I don't like rabbit stew. Of course, if there was an emergency, but no, no. Anyways, he lives in the yard. I just have to deal with him or keep him out, but I let him stay here. But yeah, he eats my collard. He, he got one of my Korean melons last night, but you know, it was my fault. I didn't cover it. So he pulled that out. Anyways, let's keep going. I want to try to make it not too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here are some more walking onions. I've made two, three videos on walking onions and with all the questions that were so good and I didn't talk about, I may have to make another one because their questions were fantastic. But look at that. These are still walking. Why are these still walking? They shouldn't be walking. I think that tub stays, this corner I should say, with the tub stays slightly warm. So they walked a little longer than the others. This one developed tiny little clusters. So I will take that one off as a whole head and put this in some soil. See, it's already brown. So it's not really getting much off the plant. If I don't do it pretty soon, these little clusters will dry up. These are still feeding off the mother plant, so no hurry. And this one is sending offshoots and growing more clusters on the top of the original cluster, which they do sometimes. They can actually send one more out, but now that it's cooling down a lot and they're kind of out of season to walk here, they probably won't send any more, but look at that. There's a cluster there, a cluster there, and a cluster there all on one plant. Is that cool? Uh, so, I don't want to go through questions, but when you, you, people have asked about harvesting, harvest your leaves from the outside. Let's see if I can get down here. I'll try to get another video together. See the leaves? It looks like a fan. Harvest from the outside. Leave the center leaves and the plant will grow for many, many, many years. If you keep cutting it, it might stress out and eventually stop growing. I don't know. So I'm, I just harvest from the outside. I don't deadhead it like you do green onions or other things. I just harvest from the outside and let the plant keep growing. Okay, there's my basil that came up from seed. It's growing in with a papaya plant that came up in my compost. I've got some tool around here because I want these really nice dinosaur kale to keep going. And I don't want the rabbit to eat it. And that really does help. Let me show you this. See this? I showed you that when it was very, very small, the rabbit made a hole. So I covered it with tool because I wanted this to get bigger. And I'm about ready to pull it off. And the tool works. The rabbit will not touch it. They get stuck to it. I did a video where I was actually out here doing the video, and I think it's on one of my other videos, where the rabbit went up to the tool and he was going to try it, and he leaped because he thought he was getting caught in a trap. And then he didn't come back. So, tool works, try it if you're having any problems. A lot of things back here are starting to die back. The cucumber has died back here. Some of the squash has died back, but I think I have another squash back there. Yes, I do. And that one's not covered. So he hasn't seen it, and I really haven't seen it either. I just saw it the other day. Look at the tomatoes. The tomato plant has died back, but the tomatoes ripened on it. Just that limb died back. I better get those off. Okay, my giant dinosaur kale. There's a bunch of them back there. I think they're going, they're about three and a half years old now. So they're really going and going. They're like trees. It snapped a little bit there and I'm kind of holding it up with some tomato cages underneath. 
I mean, technically, most farmers would just take it out and start again. Oh, another fig tree. I have to chop that out. I don't want fig trees coming up from seed because they don't always taste good and they get too big. Anyways. A farmer would chop it out and start over, but I like having my garden more like a food forest. I want to be able to enjoy it and not have to be always, you know, working out here and maintaining little plants. So I let the plants get big, do their thing, and then I have less work. That's the way it works for me. So I have plants in the ground, I have plants in pots, and even if they're in pots, like some of these, they've left the pots, their roots, they go through the bottom of the pots when there's holes on the bottom. And yes, there are holes in the bottom of that one and that one. And this way, when I water the top, I don't have to water the whole yard, but I know the plant's getting water. It works really good. I have a lot of videos on that. Check it out if you're interested. So I've got my curly kale back here. I've got my lemon verbena back here. And as I can't name everything, I always forget, but there's walking onions everywhere and chocolate mint down there. So let's see, let's, let me swing you around. My tomatillos are done. I've left them because they're going to fall and create their own plants again. Green sorrow, strawberry spinach, celery, a little popolo came up there, celery, and I'm putting together a little strawberry tower in that upside down tower planter I've got. So doing that, and then of course the Thai peppers that are really hot. I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital one day when I cut those up. If you cut them up, put rubber gloves on. I did not. And oh my gosh, I burned all night. Okay, I've got some Russian red kale in there and my mushroom plant. That is the greatest plant. If, you know, I, I'm gonna have to do a small video on that because it's a beautiful green plant and when you use it in stir fry or cooking or roast or anything, it has a mushroom taste, it's so good. All right, so let's see. So I've got some sprouting broccoli in here too. This little plant was on my deck in a pot. It was really bad. Oh, I've got more peppers. I didn't even know they were there. Things get hidden here. Look at that. Beautiful peppers in there. Orange. They're turning orange. I had this on my deck and it was stunted, the plant. So I put it in the compost bin here and the thing just took off. That was a while ago, but now it's just beautiful. Oh my gosh. I brushed against the lemon verbena, which is also flowering. And now I smell citrusy. I wish that would keep mosquitoes away, but I don't think it works. Celery has gone to seed, and I really should chop it out. And you, a lot of times what you could do is just chop out the big stalk of celery with the seed on it, and take the stalk and stick it somewhere in your garden and forget about it. Let the seeds naturally fall, and then you will end up with celery growing in places that you didn't want. <laughs> Anyways, and look at my beautiful chairs. I picked up four of them at the thrift store for $4. Are they gorgeous? They're so comfortable and so they're they're not just regular plastic chairs, they're heavy duty. You can move around in them. It's just comfortable. Got to keep an eye on those thrift stores. And when I'm ready, I may even paint them. Let's walk over here. Of course, all my mint, the orange mint, nothing's died back yet. So it'll be interesting to see in the next few weeks or the next month or two how things die back. So I don't know what's going to be with everything. Oh, look at that. Another squash, and again, that one is covered with tulle. That was the one that was in a video that a rabbit came, grabbed the tulle, and he got stuck. And he leaped so fast because he thought he was in a trap because his nails got stuck. I love the tulle. Gary said he has saved so many types of fruit with it and vegetables all because of the tulle. And it's so cheap. Everybody needs to get tulle if you're having a problem. Another cutting I did off my dinosaur kale, and look how beautiful it is. Actually, there's quite a few cuttings in there. Just That's what I love about dinosaur kale. You just chop a piece off and shove it in a pot that's damp, and they'll grow. Like this one, if the rabbits would stop gnawing on it, that little one would grow. Oh, I wanted to show you the tomatoes. Aren't these beautiful? I have to keep an eye on this now because I have found the occasional hornworm on here. The issue is the Orioles, they're the ones that really eat the hornworms. They come in and hunt and you'll see them take off with a great big green worm in their mouth. Well, I have not seen them now for a couple weeks. So they've either moved on or gone somewhere else. They're not having babies anymore. So now we have to watch them because the smaller birds 
don't tend to eat the big hornworms that have hidden. Now they'll eat them when they're small, and then when they find them tiny, they'll eat them without a problem. But they won't eat the big ones. So now it's my job, ugh, or Gary's, to keep an eye out for them because they'll hide deep in, you know, the tomatoes or underneath leaves and we won't see them. And then the, of course, the, little, the birds won't see the little ones and then they come out, they're big and they don't want to eat the big ones. So until the Orioles come back, we have to start really watching for them. But thank goodness the small birds do a great, great job and they keep the worms really down. So the occasional hornworm here and there is no big deal. I think, I think in the past two weeks we've found two. So that, that's not bad. And then there's my purple kale. Purple, I'm sorry, purple sprouting broccoli, which has yet to sprout. I don't know. It's got purple tint to the leaves. You can probably see. It's got a purple tint. I'll have to see what happens, but at least the, you know, the leaves taste really good. You can use that for all kinds of stuff. I'm making a fantastic green drink now that I'm gonna have to put a video up that is so simple and easy. And it's light, a light green drink. Okay, let's see. Again, the color that just keeps growing and growing. It was in a little pot, now it's a big tree. No, I have not planted in that black tub yet, but stuff is growing. Look at all the broccoli. That is sprouting broccoli. That is so good. I eat it every day out here. Look at this, and so does Kitty, my Yorkie. She loves it. I love sprouting broccoli. They get all these little tiny heads on it and you just eat the little heads. And you've got all the broccoli you want. It's like for making stir fry. Tomatoes growing here. Got it taped up. I think I need to stake that a little bit better. And then I've got Korean melons that I did not cover. Shame on me. Because let me show you what happened over here. See what happens when you don't cover it? You got a rabbit that loves Korean melons. Let me see if I can show you from the top. This is what I found this morning, which is still morning now, but look at this. Eaten hollow and left the skin. Obviously, they don't like the skin. Isn't that interesting? They don't like the skin. Particular, aren't we? But yeah, it actually was on this plant. There was a, I just stuck a collard in there, see if it'll sprout. I had a Korean melon growing in here and the rabbits came and chewed the stem in half. So I knew it was a goner. So I left it sitting there and it's been sitting for weeks and slowly ripening, even though it was cut off the stem because it was cut in half, the stem. And they took it last night as soon as it got yellow. Even though it was cut off from the mother plant for weeks, it still turned yellow and they waited for the right moment and took it. So there was no tool on that. Okay. That's covered because somebody was eating my chocolate mint that I wanted to sprout. So it's got a wire trash basket on it. So that will protect it and I can keep growing chocolate mint because chocolate is our favorite along with spearmint. I guess Gary likes spearmint. Either one, chocolate or spearmint he likes and peppermint. Ugh, the strawberry. I've got strawberry mint too. See this plant is starting to die back but it has three fruits on it. That one's covered. Shame on me, that one is not. And I've got, oh, two more here. I didn't even notice there were two. I knew there was one, but I didn't realize there were actually two there. I need to get that, maybe just throw some tool on the top of the whole thing I'll do. Kind of like what I did here. Let's see if I can get you down here, because there is a zucchini here. If I do not cover the zucchini, I will not have that zucchini because of the rabbit. I know, some of you guys are going, why don't you just kill the rabbit and eat it? Well, only if there was zero food, but I, I wouldn't do it, but that would be the only, it would, no, I like my rabbit. I don't mind it. It could be fenced out, but you know what? There's so much food. So if it eats something right now, it's not bothering me. I actually enjoy sitting here and watching that rabbit eat my collard and everything else. Anyways, oh, I broke this off today. It's a really good plant. This tomato plant grows so big. I don't know what it is, but I stuck it in there while I was walking through because I'm going to root that. All you have to do is cut off that's what I want to show you all. Okay, let's see the stem. This is a shoot that I can plant. All I have to do is plant this and I can plant it all the way up to the first, to the second leaf there. Or, and the bottom one too, I can plant that too. Trim off the leaves and leave a little bit on the top. 
it's so easy to root tomato and you don't have to even put it in water I just didn't want it to die you can either put it in water and let it root the segments or you can stick it in a pot and it will just take off and if it doesn't try again blue dazzling kale that's the one I did a video on I had composted in place right there in the ground this is in the ground this thing's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger yeah, what else is in here? Again, the garlic chives. I love the garlic chives. That is another plant that everybody should grow. It, it, they'll last for years, the garlic chives. You also don't cut them. You just break off the leaves from the outside. They'll multiply in clusters under the ground. And they throw so many seeds. Just throw the seeds anywhere. They'll come up in the ground and in pots and everywhere. Let's see, this tomato plant. It's starting to look a little shabby, so I'll either try to stake it up soon, trim it up, you know, stake it up better, or I don't know, just leave it and see what happens in the spring. I'm not sure, but look at this. I have a giant tomato. And why do I have a giant tomato? Because it's covered in tool. I forgot to do one the other, other day, and they found it. Oh, look, another tomato down there. I have to cover those in tool. I wanted the red one. I wanted to make sure I got the big one. There's some more big ones back there too. I think sometimes when you cover some of them and not all of them, the critters will come in and they'll try to pull on them and when they touch the tool, they think, oh, this whole area is not safe. We'll go somewhere else. Because sometimes I've only covered some of them and then they don't touch the other. So it's kind of like psychological, like maybe, maybe we're getting caught on this fruit and we can go. She's got enough in this garden. We'll find something else to go pull on. So I have not covered everything, but yes, occasionally I come out and they've eaten half a tomato that I have not covered. All right, let's swing over here. I have not picked the pepinos yet. We picked a couple and we still have a couple left and I don't know why. I'll let Gary figure that out. That's his fruit. He likes that fruit. And, oh, this is the pepino bushing out. I wasn't sure what this was. This is part of its bushing out from the bottom. I do have tool on the bottom. Let me move this plant. Remember, don't throw any leaves away. See, it is going to turn into a bush. So I'm going to have to get the pepinos off and stake it up and let it keep going. Let this thing get bigger and bigger and continue to compost. What I'll do is compost right in this area. I'll probably lift these pots out, compost here, and put another pot here. Because those roots from the pepino have left that pot. And they're in there. And they'll love it. Absolutely love it. See, here's a piece of, here's a tomato, piece of branch. And all I did was break it off and stick it in there. And now that tomato plant's going to grow. There's walking onion. See the little clusters there at set root? I just pick them up when I see the walking onion clusters and I just stick them in the ground. But I'm going to try to be a little bit better at it. So maybe I can in the spring offer some walking onions from my garden to you guys. All right, papaya. And there's my curry plant that looks like rosemary, but that's curry plant and it smells like curry. I'm not crazy about curry. So Gary can eat that. But you know, I, I change my mind. Sometimes I like something and sometimes I don't like something. I try it enough times and then I think, oh, it's not bad. All right, over here, celery that needs to be cleaned up, and tomato plants, look at that. That's my watchdog. <laughs> Got these lizards, they stake out their territory and they hang around all day. Um, this was that, it's not really a true sprouting broccoli, it's a cross between a collard and a broccoli, so it grows sparse, but it still grows a lot of broccoli, see. But I've got a radish or turnip growing back there it went to seed that I should have picked before it went all the way to seed, but oh well. Got collard in there. Let's see what else is in there. And Swiss chard growing. I think I've got some cuttings of tomatoes that I've stuck in there. Of course, walking onions, sweet potato that I did not plant came up on its own. And periodically, I think I've already passed them, you'll see green beans all over. Because my green beans are throwing lots of green beans and I have not picked them. So when I see the dried pods, I pick them up, stick them in my pocket, and then start sticking the seeds everywhere, and they're coming up everywhere. I haven't done it in Gary's garden yet. I need to do that. Okay, spearmint all over the ground. I know, people come in, oh my gosh, you're not supposed to grow mint on the ground. You know, we drink so much mint tea, and yes, this is more than we actually drink, because I grab a whole big handful take the leaves off, put it in that 
little chopper and blender type thing, blend it up and then pour you know warm water through it, hot or warm water, that we do go through a lot, but in the winter, this is gonna die back and I'm not worried about it. It's not in my way. I do try to keep it lowered to the ground more in the summer. I haven't seen any more snakes, so the snakes are starting to disappear now. And that's the only thing I worry about. But you know, it's in this one area, and to be honest, if I needed to get it out, you would take some sort of like a pitchfork or something, and you could rip off the roots because they're so long. But I'm not trying to get it out. It's fine. It smells good. The bees love the flowers. And again, see, it, there's not that many bees right now, so that's why I had to pollinate that squash in the beginning. And the sun is kind of going in and out, in and out, so my solar pump is burping. <laughs> because it's kind of getting sun, but it's not. So it's kind of been going in and out. It's a nice day today. Okay, red sorrow. Um, this sorrow is probably almost three years old. I guess this spring it will be three years old. It has never flowered, but it just keeps going and going, and I use it all the time, and I, I don't kill any of my plants. What I do is I trim from the outside or reach in in the middle. I don't deadhead anything. If you deadhead and you do it enough times, yeah, you'll probably stress it out and it will eventually die. So I just break off the leaves as I need it. So it's going really, really good. The squash in the back, let me see if I can walk over here. Most of those are long done. I picked all the zucchini. Those are the black tubs. And for now, I'm gonna leave them, throw a bunch of leaves in them and then start throwing kitchen scraps in, in a month or so, a couple months. And I'll end up with more zucchini back there, I think. It was hard to get into. It kind of overgrew and I didn't see it all. So I'm gonna see what, how or what I'm gonna do, or I'm not gonna worry about it and just do it again. Dazzling blue kale, look at the size of these things. They were like four or five feet tall. That one's actually in a triple decker thing I built. I can't really show it. This, uh, this brown thing is um, seeds from a green Swiss chard, but it's three decorates. It's a big pot. See, it's a container. And then I've got a pot on the bottom, another pot on top of the other pot that's filled with, you know, leaves and, and let's just say soil. And then another pot on top. So it's like three decorates and I've got walking onions growing around the pot. I can't, I hope you can visualize it because I can't really get in there. And then the dazzling blue kale, which was a tiny little plant, was on the top, and now it's a giant plant. And notice they're gonna get beautiful as the weather cools because they love the cool weather, and their leaves will be sweeter. All the kales do that. The dinosaur kales, the curly kales, even the collards, the whole family like the cool weather. Anyways, let's keep going. Look at the eggplant. I finally got my act together and got all the yellow eggplant off. And I'm gonna go ahead and never mind. Gosh, you know, every time I think I've done it. Okay, I have three more left. You know, I thought I got them all off. Look at that. And another bucket full. I don't know. I don't seem to get to it quick enough. And look how fast it's growing. These purple eggplant were tiny a few days ago. So they grow so, there's only two plants here and they grow so fast. There's one plant in one container and there's another plant in that container. And they just grow dozens and dozens and dozens of eggplant. And they grow more than I can use, but chop that up, it's great in the compost. And I'm not leaving it out for the rabbits because that was my mistake. I left it on the ground and I'll have to find another place for it. They came in here, they ate it all up, thought it was so good, they started pulling the eggplant off the plant. So they've forgotten. So I'm not leaving it down on the ground for them. All right, let's swing over here. I think this zucchini type plant is done. I do have seed beans coming up everywhere. I just stick beans in their uh, seeds and they grow. That's the strawberry mint, tastes terrible. That's the chocolate mint, that's wonderful. Sage, I really never planted anything in here except for the walking onions. The celery came up, the walking onions, well, I probably stuck some bulbs in there, there's a little, green Swiss chard. Let's walk over here. See the beans? Oh, nuts. The rabbit ate that. I'm gonna have to cover that. I might have to pull some tool around there because I had some new beans coming up back there and I see the leaves are gone. So he ate that. But um, I've been taking the beans 
And look at that, they're full. I've got them everywhere all over the yard because I've been sticking them everywhere. Okay, and some of them fell on the ground, see? And then I forget where they are and they grow. The plant in the back is a sweet potato growing that came up from the compost. I could have torn it out, I left it. See, beans everywhere. Those are all green beans. And then they're saying, why didn't you pick them? My daughter went home with a great big bag. I do pick them, but in the summer we eat different than we do in the winter. I think because we're working, it's so nice and we like going out in the yard. So I don't make stir fry and different things and I don't know, I just forget. Otherwise I'd be picking the green beans and putting them in soups and stir fries and even in, our, in eggs and anything I cook. And I just didn't get to all of them. I got to some, but I mean, there were so many. Look how many are on here. That's why when my daughter came, she said, you're not eating your green beans. And I said, no, so they picked the big bag. Let's see, the walking onions are walking against the wall. Why are they walking against the wall? Look at all of these walking. They should not be walking. I know why they're walking. Because the wall is warm. There's a microclimate there. So they are still walking. See these? That's a perfect example. See, this one doesn't have the sets yet. If you broke this off, the odds are you'd lose this plant. See how thick it is, the leaf? You don't touch those thick leaves if you want to have more walking onions, you leave it. See, it's thicker. And now this one that's got a bulb there, which is starting the multi-bulbs, there's no bulbs yet, is already sending out another shoot that's gonna have more clusters on the top. Is that cool? I love these plants. That's probably my number one plant because it's so easy to grow. They grow themselves, they take care of themselves, and they multiply. And I've, oh my God, and you know, I'm gonna talk and end up, I really need to do one more video on walking onions. But you can't find them at the big box stores. Why? Because that's all they have. See, I mean, they, wouldn't, they would never be able to buy enough to supply all their stores. You know, like Lowe's and Home Depot, they would need I wouldn't say thousands, but far more than that to supply all their stores. So they stick with things that have seeds or, or sets. Onions throw so many seeds and then they turn into sets because the first year they plant the seeds, they turn into these little um, tubers, or, or I shouldn't say tubers, they turn into bulbs and they dig those up, they dry them up, clean it up, and they sell those as sets. And you can buy 50 or whatever in a bag. You can't do that with walking onions. You cannot put them in cold storage. They're a live plant. If you try to store the top sets on them, they'll die. They have to be planted as soon as they're ready to be planted. Even a little earlier, but not later. The longer you wait, you end up losing them. Okay, I guess the sun is just barely enough out for this one. It's so cute when I have the hummingbirds on there. They take baths. Tomato plant here. This is the gold sun. And collard on the bottom growing. This one kind of fell over. See the pot? It's on the ground, it kind of twisted around, but it's fine. Let's see, purple, I don't know what this is called, it's a purple kale, a curly kale. My tree collard's in the back, look at that, you can barely see it, it's behind the tomato plant, that's getting tall. And then I've got another one, let me show you another tree collard. Isn't that cool? It's in the pot, and of course it has left the pot, look at the side shoots. This is how you propagate tree collard, you would cut that off and grow that because from seed you will not get the same plant. I, I shouldn't say that. That was wrong. Bad on me. You may not get the same plant. So that's why you want to propagate that from cuttings, which I probably will do that with that soon. But look how tall that one is. That one's a good five foot tall. And these leaves, if you don't like collard, are sweeter. These are really, really good and they're huge. Let's see if I can step back here. I have not done much with the tower back there. Maybe come spring I will. Uh, more different kales growing back there, but I'm not getting back there, see, so I'm not really taking care of them. So I've got to figure out how to be able to trim my garden up so I can get to everywhere because I'm not. Here, let me show you something else. See, these are green beans. Here's a green bean. They're all over, and then of course the brown ones, and so I just keep dropping the seeds. These tomatoes are really cute. They look like little bells. See? My daughter got a kick out of that. She's look at them. Look at the shape of them. And don't forget, all your brown leaves, you collect that and put that in the bucket and use that in your compost pens. Look at the pods on the moringa. 
Is that amazing? I didn't even think I was going to be able to grow this tree here. Stuck that in a cut trash can, cut in half. There are, there is no bottom on the trash can it's in. It was just an old trash can we had. And planted two seeds in there. They both grew and one tree is just massive. I can't believe how big it got and how many pods we've got. So we're leaving the pods. Gary tasted them. They are good when they're very small. They taste terrible when they're big, even though the whole thing is edible. The whole plant, I was told, is edible. And the leaves have more vitamins than so many other nutritious plants. It's amazing. And I actually add the green leaves to my tea. I add it to my green drinks, the both types that I make. I add it to a lot of stuff, but mainly my tea and my green drinks, if I remember. Okay, this is carrot. This was just a carrot I bought at the store. Stuck the top in, it's, it's trying to grow all kinds of seeds and stuff. Oh, there's a little bug in there. Okay, so we'll see. I don't think it's gonna grow carrot. Look at the purple basil. I hope you can see that. I cannot get in there and show you, but I've talked about it in my other videos. And that's in a little tiny pot. I went to the nursery. I saw the purple basil. I thought that is really cool. Brought it home and thought, I'm just going to stick it in that three tower I made. I've got a video on this. Just stuck it in there, pushed it in, you know, just like made, made a little hole and pushed it in. And the pot, I didn't take it out of the pot. So it never went into any type of shock. And it just grew and the roots went through the bottom of the pot. And that is a massive plant. It goes all the way to the ground, which can probably see there and then it goes all the way to the back and Gary loves the purple basil so I only bought one and that's good for people that are, have a small garden just walk around at the nursery if you see something you like buy one you don't need to buy a whole bunch and this is my collard field where the rabbit goes under and eats I like my collard field now when they get this big the leaves and the birds eat it too by the way they're kind of to me, I guess I'm not real big on collard. It's better to get younger leaves, like smaller leaves like this. That would be the leaves I guess you would cook. These are kind of strong. I'm not sure what, but as far as compost, oh my gosh. Put that in a bucket of water, let it rot for two or three days, water your plants, and they love collard leaf compost. Look at this, it's a jungle in there. No wonder the rabbit lives here. He's got heaven in there, look at this. He's got food and shelter and everything so he lives in there red swiss chard that has gone to seed which is growing in my compost bin there which i have to straighten out and do something with and then of course this is the papaya the, the little papaya trees i know they're not trees but that's what i'm calling them that boy did they take off they're not even a year old they are so tall things are over six feet tall now and they're already setting fruit is that amazing? I'm amazed. Now, let me slide down here. We cut the bottoms. There is a video on that. We did trim the bottom of this. Well, Gary made big holes and broke the bottom. So now it's in the ground, the roots. The roots have left. Let me see if I can show you in here. Look at that. It was in a small pot. I didn't plant it, by the way. It came up in my compost pen. Came into a small pot. It was growing something else. Look at that. And the roots left the tub and now they're in the ground so it's good it can stay here we'll just have to watch it at some point we may have to stake it so we'll have to see if we have to stake it or not but i need to pop out there's a whole bunch of them in there you probably can see them i may not be able to get the third biggest one out because it probably will kill it but i can get the small ones out and i'll show you what i did with another small one see i've got garlic chives in pots and you can't see it here but i also have garlic chives and I didn't plant it. it, came up on its own, growing in the ground. Oh, here's Korean melon, look at that, covered in tool, and that's ready. I better get it off before they decide or, you know, they want it or the tool falls off. Tomatoes everywhere. I actually trellised the tomatoes on last year's tomatoes. So I left the old tomato plant in there, see? And the new tomato plant is growing on the old tomato plant. Isn't that amazing? Look at this. hundreds and hundreds of tomatoes here everywhere is that beautiful so we should hopefully have tomatoes 
all winter. So we'll see. I mean, I know we'll have tomatoes all fall, but if we don't get a freeze, we'll have the tomatoes going. Strawberry plant. I didn't buy any new strawberry plants, and I do know how to layer these with wrapping aluminum foil around them with some soil. So I'm going to have to do something because strawberries do better on the new plants than the old plants. So I do have to do something. We'll see. Let me swing around. Not much here. That's parsley that went to seed. So I've got two parsleys in there and a celery, I think, too. Some red Swiss chard and again, the purple kale. There's Gary's sunroom. We won't go into that. <laughs> See, it's got a big sliding glass door. So he calls it his sunroom. It's a bedroom. He's growing plants in there. All right, another moringa tree. This one was the one that got chewed down to the ground by the rabbits, but it grew back. And I think I've got squash growing in here that will not grow. And the reason I say it's not going to grow, it's the wrong season. I, it's too late, really, I think. Now, they see garlic chives. That's all garlic chives back there. In the ground. Just the seeds fell and they grew. Or I threw it there. All right. Sorry. They do better and grow much bigger. The leaves would be bigger when the weather's warmer. We're getting really cool at night and we're not staying as warm during the day, so a lot of the seedlings on the squash I don't think will grow now. Had I had them big, they would have continued to grow, but the rabbits did do some damage this year by, I'm gonna call it deadheading, where the vine is coming out and they ate the top. So they basically ate the heart of the plant, you know, I mean, that's where, where it needed to grow. So I don't think that's gonna make, they did it to this one too, and this one threw a little bit of side shoots. And there's a bee. And he looks cold. Yeah, they chewed up a lot, so I'll have to figure out something, but I will, I will. And of course, I've got a radish or something growing back here. Look at the tomatoes. The whole wall here, the whole fence, I should say, it's gonna to turn to a wall of tomatoes, I hope. There was cucumbers back there. It looked like the vine finally died out. Cucumbers like really warm weather. We've been cool. Look how small. Now this is when you can eat the pots. See when they're small? Gary said they taste good. Very beanie like But when they get really bigger and then they get giant, he said they definitely don't taste good. Not to him. I'm sure there's recipes you can slice them up and do different things with because people love their moringa. But look at them. These are starting to turn brown. So we'll be getting seeds soon. So we'll see how that goes. Look at that. The tree is, let me see if I can hike down a little bit. Look at that. Is that amazing? Now there's that other hummingbird feeder I can't get to. Look at that. It's just amazing. There's hundreds of pots on here. Little did I know I was going to grow a moringa tree. All right. Hopefully the tree makes it to the winter and we don't have a freeze. I did not do anything here. Celery came up. Mint, I don't want that. Rosemary back there. Please bear with me, my neighbors are building a new house. <laughs> so this is gonna be for many months probably, Gary told me. So right now they're building the pad, so they're on the top of a hill. As long as it doesn't slide in the mine, I don't care what they do. Um, a whole bunch of baby papayas are coming up in there and of course one tomato plant came through so we'll see if that makes it. This is the papaya that Gary staked and we have gotten I don't even know how many papayas. Tons of t papayas. See it's growing a side shoot. Isn't that interesting? They didn't do that before. They're just starting it now. More papayas and again I've got videos on this. So I don't have to get into all this but we were not getting papayas until I started composting in place, kitchen scraps, rotting leaves, stuff, you know, from the garden, everything, eggshells, whatever you want to throw in there, stuff you find in your fridge. And once we started doing that, the trees just, I know they're not trees, the trees went wild and just started growing all kinds of papayas. And there's my young pomegranate tree I planted. All right. This just came up. Those are two orange trees and that little avocado tree. I, what I'm going to do here, oh, let me go back and show you real quick, is I'm going to change this. I'm going to start putting, I think, papaya trees here unless I end up putting one of my fig trees here, but I don't think so. I have another place of fig tree. Walk over here with me. This papaya tree 
I actually yanked out from the other one. Let me swing over. From in there, I told you I've got a bunch of little ones. So what I did was I watered the, the container really good and just pulled, literally pulled, didn't even dig it out. And I just pulled out that tree and it was shorter. And I took a pot, these are one of those black floral pots, and I cut the bottom out of that. I threw kitchen scraps on the bottom. I dug a hole, threw kitchen scraps on the bottom, slipped in the open bottom pot, and just loaded it with just broken down, you know, wood chips. And I kind of dug into the ground where the wood chips broke down, and some native soil, stuck the uh, papaya plant in there, covered it up. This was probably, oh, this has been weeks now. And it was, there was almost no leaves on top. I took all the leaves off except for a few on the top and it is taking off. Now that I know that it worked here, I'm going to line up this area. I'm going to pull the mint out because I don't want the mint down here. This is orange mint anyways. I got enough orange mint. I'm going to start putting papayas, plants all through here when I find the time. So that's what I plan on doing. So this is going to be papayas. Plus you can walk around them easy. And I like that. So this I'm planning on putting a whole bunch more. This was the other one we did a video on. And you can go back and see the old video, I'm sure, if you want. Where this particular plant did not throw any fruit at all. And that's when we realized there was no compost containers near it. So put the tub there. I put that one. I was composting in place in that one as well. And then a papaya came up. And that's growing. Notice it's leaning to make sure it gets enough sun. But it's going to bypass the plant next to it. And once we start composting, we start getting all kinds of fruit off of it. And Gary's got one he's got to harvest, and he's been harvesting. Another pomegranate back there now. Oh, and then a rosemary back there. Needs a little water. Okay, let's, let's go to the truck bed. Walk with me to the truck bed. Wait a minute. I don't know where Gary found Superman, but I did not see that. <laughs> Gary found Superman. Let's walk to the truck bed. Well, we're at the truck bed and please bear with me. Like I said, it's not that close, but it sure does sound close. They're building a house up there, so it's gonna be noisy for a while. Anyways, Gary put in a, a hose here for me. I've got a faucet now, look at that. So I don't have to drag a 200, 300 foot hose all over the yard. Let me tell you, when they're full of water, they're heavy. So he just put this in. So because he did, I have ideas now. I've got this whole area where he has cleared off the wood chips. And I told him, don't put any more piles here because I think I'm going to start planting some trees here because this is the edge of a, you know, the hill side here. And next to each tree, there's this dishwasher down there. Next to each tree, I'm going to start composting in place with most tubs and just start throwing all the leaves and kitchen scraps and all the garbage I can in there. And I think this is gonna be really cool. So now that I've got a, a hose here, I don't have to think about dragging. It was such a pain to drag that thing anytime it needed to be watered. And the truck bed, sorry about this, the truck bed holds a good amount of water so I don't have to water it every day. Even on the hottest days, I was only watering it every other day. But now that it's been cooler, I water it maybe once or twice a week at that. I kept the Swiss chard covered in case I needed it. It will probably go to seed, otherwise the rabbits would have wiped it out. There's a lonely little pomegranate that might get some water. Now, this is for that person that wrote to me and said, you bypass the avocado tree. Are you telling me I can't pull it out? I have to keep this? Look at it. I guess for now I will keep the avocado tree. It came up in the compost in place in here. Let me move this. And it grew and grew and grew and I kept saying I'm gonna pull it out and Gary said get it out and somebody was so upset two weeks ago that I didn't show the avocado tree. So I will keep it and I did try to graft somewhere but I, I'm not I don't know how to graft and I haven't really studied it so once I study it I could probably do it see I tried to graft here but it didn't work it came right off we almost lost this little avocado tree 
when it got really hot. I mean, the whole thing fried and all the leaves fell off and it looked like a dead, I mean, lots of branches you can see have to be trimmed. It just looked like a dead tree. And then all of a sudden it came back and look at it, it came back better than ever. So keep in mind when things look like they're dead, they may not be, especially trees and big plants. So now the leaves are beautiful. Is it gonna throw fruit? I don't know. You know, they say they don't, but let me tell you something. In a house I lived at many years, many years ago, when I bought the house, there was a six foot tree out front that the people had told me that they planted the avocado tree from seed, which means you'll never get fruit. That's what people said. I left it. The thing turned out to be 20 feet tall and I didn't even like avocados back then. By the time I sold that house, I was so upset. It was throwing hundreds of avocados. There was always avocados on it. My neighbor's goat broke out to come to my tree to eat the leaves. It was amazing. My girlfriend, she used to come over and pick big bagfuls and make guacamole and freeze it on a tree that was planted by seed and never grafted. So they can, but it did take years. It took about 10, 12 years till it started throwing avocados. It was the only tree in that city too that I saw. Okay, so I hope I spent enough time on my avocado tree walking onions. Now, my onions are bent and I'm not taking care of them. If you had them in a garden and you took care of them and trimmed the outside leaves, they would look much nicer. I don't look for pretty. I look for functional, edible food. So they're kind of falling over, but that's how you would do it. See, I planted them in here and go oh, get that snail out. I planted them in here in clusters and normally you can break it apart if you want to use the onion heads on the bottom, little bulbs. But you could plant it either way you want. Just make sure you don't let them dry out. These are not walking because it's cooler here right now. There's not a single one walking anymore. See? But this, these taste incredible. But pick from the outside or just don't pick the center of the plant. And then you'll have the same plant just going and going. And these are garlic chives. And these are like my second favorite. I bought them once and I've never had to buy them again. They're all over the place now. Okay, and then we got this bright red Swiss chard. Look at this. Isn't that amazing? This is an older plant too. Look at the trunk. And it's skimpy because it went to seed. When they go to seed, their leaves get small because they're putting all their energy into producing their offspring, which is the seed. Once the seeds are done, if I cut this off, the leaves will get much bigger and it will go back into making big leaves like that one over there. So I'm really not doing anything in here and I've got now that I've got water, I've got all these ideas. I'll probably put more tubs in here. Let's see what's here. I've got green Swiss chard. I've got some seeds I put from a zucchini. No, it's not zucchini. It's probably a squash, hybrid squash. Didn't really do anything. Well, it had problems. It got eaten to the ground and then ended up coming back. I think the snails got to it. So I'm gonna have to clear the snails out better. There's a few snails here and there. But that's the truck bed. And I think I am gonna do some changes this year coming up and start planting a whole lot more. Like I said, you know, if you bring the water, I will come. No, it's just, it was so hard. I'm dragging the hose from originally from the front of the house all the way down there. So the hose was just being dragged. And when these things are he full of water, that hose is heavy. I mean, I probably have muscles. I was really pulling it. So now I don't have to worry about that. I already know this is not a short video. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but you know, he, he dug this out. He put the PVC down. So he ran another faucet, which was good, and he wants to make one more faucet, he told me, over there. And maybe if I have water here, I mean, it's not that hard to drag it to this area, but maybe if I have water here, I will try to build up more. He was building me these wooden things, like raised beds, but I, I really like the containers. I actually found a whole bunch in the trash one day. I stopped by and the guy said they were moving and they didn't want them. And, I, and he said, take them. And he not only that, he put them in my truck. <laughs> 
So I had got a whole bunch and then I bought some more at the thrift store the other day for three dollars. I like the color, a dark gray. They kind of disappear. You don't see them. Because the blue ones stand out to me too much. You know, when they're blue like that, they just stand out so much. And I like the grays and the browns the best. Green's okay, but grays and browns are my favorite colors. But you know, maybe I will do more here once I have water here. I grew a lot of cucumbers and of course I've got the moringa tree growing. This one's got pods too. This one struggled. We thought last year, or I thought it was dead all winter. It was just a little tiny stick all dried out, but it came back and it looks beautiful. Let's see, let's walk over here real quick. This is Swiss chard, kind of it's green and red. I have not done anything in here yet. This is an eggplant that came up and it grows. Eggplant that's kind of a purpley white and I need to clean that up. There's one eggplant I think in the back. See, this is squash coming up, but it's the wrong time of the year. It's not warm enough. So you're not gonna get those big beautiful leaves when they first come up. So it's struggling and I don't think we're gonna get anywhere with the squash now. Um, see another squash trying to come up from the compost, but it's just the wrong time. It's gonna look wimpy. It might throw a little fruit, literally a tiny little fruit, but we're out of squash season right now. A few more months, oh my goodness. But see, I've been sticking walking onions everywhere. And so they're coming up everywhere. That's why I love my walking onions. So good. Celery coming up. Of course, it came up on its own. There's some more Swiss chard. The rabbits have been eating it. I covered one up a little bit. And let's see. Here is some more red Swiss chard. And then the tomatoes all over. I really wish my Orioles were here because I know that we found the other day I think one or two on this one. And I know that there's another one around here. I have seen them, Gary has seen them. He didn't have his camera. They came into the tomato patch and they were looking all over and he said, oh my gosh, goodness, it was amazing. It just grabbed something big and green and took off into the sky. He said, boy, he wished he had his camera because they really hunted and hunted and they'll take the tomato horn worms when they're really big, which is nice because I don't like removing them. I have to go get a plastic bag and pull them off or basically just call Gary. That's usually the easiest thing to do and let him do, oh. There it is. I knew there was one on here somewhere. Look at that. I do not like them. I can't say anything good about them. I know a lot of people can. I do not have anything good to say. Oh well, so there was one there. We'll have to look around, see if there's any more. I'll let Gary get that one off. He's eating my leaves. But I think the reason I really don't like them is when I first started growing tomatoes, maybe three, four years ago, before we brought in the wood chips, it was horrible. Are you out of food? When you, uh, he's just coming here to the ring because he zipped around my head. Look at this. He zipped around my head. So I thought he was out of food. When there are feeders, and it only has to be one feeder empty. If it's his feeder, he'll come zip around. They'll come and zip around my head, and it's like they're letting me know there's a feeder empty, go fill it. <sighs> Annoying little birds, aren't they? <laughs> but going back to the tomatoes, when we first started, I decided, okay, we're gonna start gardening. And this was before the wood chips. We had so many hornworms. It was, an, it was literally a nightmare. I mean, I could have probably done a movie on it, a horror movie on the nightmare of the hornworms. You'd come out here and there'd be just hundreds of them. There'd be everywhere. And you wouldn't see a beautiful green plant with one hornworm on it. No, no, no. It's, it wouldn't be a beautiful green plant with one hornworm. You would see green stems and it would be covered. And it would be almost like overnight. You'd come out and the whole plant was eaten away and the leaves were all gone and it was covered in hornworms and it was, it was a nightmare. And then, then Gary went and got a black light and he was coming out here at night and he was just filling up with so many hornworms. I told Gary there is no way I'm going to be growing tomatoes. I'm done. I can't do this. I don't like the looks of them. I don't like to deal with them. I'm trimming and you don't even see them and you're almost trimming them off the plant as you're doing things. 
and I'm serious, I was getting really close to calling it quits with tomatoes and just doing other stuff. This was before the bird baths. This was before I started putting the water fountains in the yard. Once I started with the water fountains in the yard, it brought the orioles in, they started hanging around, all the birds started hanging around, because I didn't have birds in the yard before. And, you know, I mean, I didn't know what to do. I was gonna spray, I didn't know, whatever it took to get rid of them, I never had to. It was amazing. Um, all of a sudden, there's less and less. And you know, let me tell you something, I've been told it would never get less and less. I was told once you get them, they go into the ground and you're gonna have more and more. So every year it would be more and more. And they'd say, oh, you can't plant tomatoes in the same place. Let me tell you something. Once I brought the birds in, I planted tomatoes in the same place. I don't rotate my plants. Nature doesn't rotate. Nature does move plants because of animals carrying around different plants, but they don't rotate. I don't rotate. But I heard all these horror stories and being told that I was not going to be able to grow tomatoes. And once the birds were brought in, and you saw, my yard is full of hundreds of birds all day. Do they eat some of my plants? Yes, but you know what? I'm paying, I, this is their payment. They can eat. Doing labor for me, and they can eat what they want. They don't eat that much. But boy, once we brought the birds in, we don't even have to think about any type of spray. Sometimes plants do get bugs. You know, they'll get some aphids or something on them. And take a hose and wash it off. They're not that smart. They're not coming back. Take a hose and blast it off and they're gone. And that's not tomato plants. That's some of your greens. But I don't worry about the single, the single hornworm. The only thing I worry about is finding Gary to get it off because I don't want to deal with it. I guess in a way, you can say they have beauty. I mean, they are fascinating. I, I'll be honest. They are, a, they are fascinating. Because there are a lot of caterpillars I happen to really, really like. I like the swallowtail ones that come in. And yes, they just, oh, they'll eat all my parsley. And, and that's fine. They're beautiful. And then they have beautiful butterflies. I know these have the beautiful moths, the large, beautiful moths. So the occasional one is not that bad, but he's going anyways, because if there's one, there's probably another one or two in there. Now we're going to have to hunt them because, like I said, the Orioles aren't getting them. Now maybe the Mockingbirds and other birds are coming in, but boy, I'll tell you, those Orioles, they're, they're just eating machines. They eat so much. But anyways, okay, well, that's it. This is the squash plant that's coming up. We'll see if I get anything. See, it's, it does have some fruit. Maybe if I throw some more compost in there, and maybe I will get some fruit off of it. So I'll throw some kitchen scraps is what I'll, I meant to say, and see if I get a few off for the fall. We're getting tons of tomatoes. Tomatoes are so good. Look at the tomatoes in there. Aren't they beautiful? We have so many, and we had a party here a couple weeks ago two or three weeks ago already, and the kids were just eating tomatoes. There were so many. This plant would have done okay. I would have gotten squash. This plant's on its way out. Probably would have gotten squash all winter, but this is where the rabbits came. Probably shaking the camera, and I'm sorry. See what they did? They took the ends off of both plants. They literally were, the clusters were growing of the zucchini, because these are true zucchini. They, if it would have been a hybrid, it might have sent side shoots off, because the hybrids are kind of related to the pumpkins, which will sh send out, out multiple growth shoots. A lot of your zucchinis may not, and they did not. So they're kind of hanging in there, but you can see the leaves have got powdery mildew, and. They're not, it's really not doing well. So really technically I'll probably pull it out, throw it in this bathtub I've got here that I'm gonna be throwing all kinds of stuff in until I plant in it later. And if he does put a hose in here for me, a faucet, it will be easier. I don't have to think about dragging. Can I drag it? Yes, but it's like, oh, I gotta go out there and water and drag that hose through. So it will make it easier. But you know, like I said, to come to this wall is not that bad. It was going all the way out to the truck bed. That was a pain because the hose was, I don't know, it was 300 foot long, full of water. 
So then I, start, I got smart and I started dragging the hose first before I turned it on. It's lighter. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it's easier. So let him do it if he does. And if he doesn't, no matter what, I'm probably going to get some more bins. I like my bins. See my bins there? I like my bins. Because I have total control and I just like growing that way. And you can see that, let me show you the brown one. Or the beige one, it's got the holes not on the bottom, see? And yet, it was full of earthworms. They still will find their way up. They'll go to that hole and they'll go right in the holes on the bottom there. Because I wanted to make sure it's a warm wall, that there was always some sort of water on the bottom. You wouldn't see it because it would be underneath all the soil in there. But I wanted to make sure there was water because we are very dry. We went for three months here with no rain. So I want to make sure that the plants always have some sort of water in them. Now if they have on the bottom, like the tomatoes are growing in regular flower pots you would get from trees and stuff, you know, well then that's okay. The roots are going into the ground there. This is a tier, I believe I did a video on that one, where it's two tier, it's a bigger tub on the bottom, smaller on the top, and there's another pot in there on the back where I can throw kitchen scraps in here or leaves and stuff and continue to compost so it's not directly on top of the plant which is still okay if I did do it on top but do it that way and then by watering the pot in there it would feed the whole thing but like I said the rabbits got it I should have put some tool or did something a little better and I will think more I could always fence it too but eh, like I said I have so much so I'm not really worried if I didn't have that much That'd be one thing if I was doing a farmer's market and I was selling it, then every loss would be money. But I don't look at it that way. So not yet. You know, I don't plan on doing a farmer's market. But I don't look at it that way. I'm going to apologize to everybody for my short video being tremendously long. But at least let me tell you, I hope that when I do a video on as a garden tour I hope that I'm not just saying oh look look at my tomatoes or look at my squash or look at my hornworm you know I'm I hope I'm giving somebody some ideas because I do like to walk through and talk about things I do and things that are good to try or or what worked for me or what didn't work for me like not covering that plant I should have done something and if I would have done something like I did last year I had some tool around I had zucchini all through the winter but this time I didn't and maybe next time I won't plant zucchini here maybe next time I will plant hybrid zucchini because it's so open here so this way if it does get deadheaded on the end it will throw another shoot and just take off another way or maybe I'll just plant more so if I lose some I lose some and start them earlier too so with that I'm sorry I talked too long I don't know why I do that but I am, I'm apologizing and um, I'll do another tour in a couple weeks and I'm going to try to get down and do an update on Gary's and hopefully get that together real soon. So have a wonderful day. Thank you everybody and if you got hornworms don't worry about it. Bring the birds in and nature will take care of it. They will keep it under control. You're always going to have some because remember the hornworms actually are beautiful moths. Some people call them hummingbird moths. I mean, they're huge, beautiful moths that come out at night, so I don't have to see them in the garden. But, but they're beautiful. I have had the occasional one come into the house. So, you know, the occasional one going through, it's not really doing much damage to that plant. I mean, the plant's doing great. It's full of tomatoes. It's eating some of the leaves. That one's getting really close to dropping into the ground, making its cocoon, and disappearing until it turns into a moth. But I don't want hundreds, and if you've got hundreds, bring in the birds, and the birds will do it for you. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'm sorry this is so long for a middle-of-the-month tour. Have a great day. Thumbs up, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody. gone.